Well, hey, friends, and welcome back to the Another Step podcast. My name is Kyle, and this is a show all about the habits, rhythms, and disciplines that help people grow and become the person that they were created to be. I'm really grateful that you're here with me on this episode. Today, we have a little bit different of an episode than you will normally see on the show. Normally, um, I'll be sitting at a table just like this one, um, having a conversation with someone I know or someone that I've recently met about the their life and about their story and about what makes them uh, who they are and what's helping them to grow. Um, We're going to be wrestling with all of the different habits and things that uh, help people take another step toward uh, being the person that they want to be and the person that they were created to be. But because this is Thanksgiving week as we're recording this, it's Tuesday, a little bit after lunch for me, um, I wanted to do something just a little bit different because as you're probably aware, uh, recording on a Thanksgiving week is a little bit a little bit complex and a little bit complicated because people are traveling and all of those kinds of things. So today is a solo episode, um, but I'm really excited to share a couple of things with you that I think are going to bless you and help you take another step in your journey. Um, So if I am thinking back a little bit, um, I used to have this newsletter. And I say I used to, even though it was relatively recent that I uh, was the last time that I posted to this particular newsletter. I mean, it was called Three Things. And essentially the premise was this. I wanted to keep something relatively concise um, that I could send out on a regular basis and didn't have to come up with a ton of crazy content every single time. So I broke this down into three things. A thought, something that I've been thinking about that week or that month. A resource, so a a book or a video or something like that that um, could could help you grow and had helped me to grow. And then a verse, because um, like we've talked about before, um, I am a a pastor and the ways and teachings in the life of Jesus is what has shaped me and helped me to become who I am. So I wanted to include some of that encouragement in this written newsletter. Now, um, because we recently started the Another Step podcast, um, I wanted to bring back, I wanted to resurrect, if you will, um, my three things newsletter. Now, um, I am trying this time to go in with a little bit, a little bit better um, expectations for myself because as you know, life gets busy um, and I don't want to shoot too high. I want to make sure that I can be consistent with this thing. So starting at the beginning of 2024 here in just about a month or so, the three things newsletter will officially relaunch. Um, and what I want to do today is basically have a podcast version of a three things newsletter and kind of share a few things that I've been thinking about, a couple of things that I would recommend to you and then end just with a short passage from the Bible. So if you are not a Christian, if the, if the way of Jesus is not your typical worldview, um, I'd just like to offer this to you as maybe a way to see yourself and to see um, Jesus maybe in a fresh kind of light. Um, so I have to say, though, if you'd like to go ahead and sign up for this newsletter, if you'd like to go ahead and maybe go back and read some other um, some other installments that we've already put together, you can do so. There's a link in the description or in the show notes if you're listening on audio, um, and you can access all of that and stay up to date with everything that we've got going on. So first, a thought. Um, Yesterday, um, my coworker, Sean Brown, and I got to sit down and have a conversation, a a podcast, if you will, um, for our church. Uh, We create a Thanksgiving family devotional every single year, and um, this is just an opportunity for us to kind of stir up some discussion in the home instead of having everyone show up to our church building and and get out and travel when they've got family in town. Um, And one of the motivators that we had been talking through, um, particularly for this Um, for this resource was this idea of having some kind of momentum at the end of the year. Now, if you're anything like me, like you've got this tendency to want to just coast through the holidays. Like all of the resolutions that you left behind in February, they are long gone. I mean, the diet, I mean, let's be honest, between Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner, like there is no need to even think about a diet. I mean, come on, Christmas cookies, let's, let's go. Um, But we just want to coast and we just want to get through the end of the year and we'll worry about all of the growth and all of the progress and the goals later. But instead of doing that, what if you started right now 
and just did a couple of really small things that helped you build some momentum going into 2024. Because let's be honest, like most of us, we hit the beginning of a new year and we're all jacked up and we're pumped about what goals we're going to set and what kind of growth we're going to have. But underneath all of it, we're a little bit scared. We're a little bit scared that we're not going to succeed. We're a little bit scared that we're just not going to be able to pull it off this time. Like what if 2024 is just like 2023 and it's just a colossal failure by the end of January? I don't want that for you. I don't want that for me. And I'd love to be able to see you grow and to be able to take some steps toward that right now. Um, So what if instead of just getting to January and starting fresh, what if you laid some groundwork right now so that you go strong through the end of the year and into January of 2024? So here's just a couple of little ideas that I've been thinking about um, on how you could do this. Maybe you take some time to journal about what you'd like to see happen in the coming year. We're not talking about like laying out any like smart goals or anything like that. Just think a little bit about what would you like to see happen in the coming year? What kind of uh, what kind of goals would you like to set potentially? What kind of trips would you like to go? What kind of life would you like to have in the coming year? Just take some time, like literally just open up a note on your phone or pull out a journal actually with like a like a pen and paper and just kind of let your mind wander and just dream a little bit. Like there's really some power in dreaming when it comes to uh, visualizing what we want in life. To take that a step further, um, I actually created a video at the very beginning of this year um, about my yearly theme for the year. So um, you can go check out that. That'll be linked down in the description below, or you can check out the Cortex podcast. That's Those are the guys that actually came up with this idea of a yearly theme. And the main premise is um, instead of setting like particular goals, like I want to lose 50 pounds and I want to run a marathon and I want to do this. What if instead you said like, this is going to be the year of fitness. So then regardless of whether you hit an arbitrary numerical goal, as long as you were pursuing fitness over the course of the year, then you could call it successful, right? Um, So maybe do a little bit of brainstorming in that journaling time about what a yearly theme could look like. A lot of people start with like the year of consistency or the year of intentionality or the year of fun or whatever it is for you. And then let that just be the filter through which you let the entire rest of your year go through. Maybe you just pick one thing, one practice, one um, idea, one discipline that you want to see become like a consistent habit for you in the coming year. Like this is not, we're trying to fix the entire thing. This is, hey, I really would love to say that I exercise on a regular basis. So what if between now and the end of the year, you commit to going on a walk three times per week? So you are already making the kind of um, progress toward becoming a person who exercises regularly, or maybe um, you'd like to read more in the coming year. Um, What if you just like picked up a note on your phone and made a list of the books that you'd like to read in the coming year? Or maybe you are a spiritual person, maybe you're a follower of Jesus like I am, and you want to see a daily Bible reading, uh, or you want to read through the Bible in the year in 2024. Maybe you just start by reading the Bible a few times per week outside of church between now and the end of the year. Um, These are just like super little tiny things. You know, James Clear would call them atomic habits, just little tiny things that compound and grow and become the foundation of the life that we really want to live. So that's my thought for you. Just think about what it would look like to go into the new year with some kind of momentum. Second, a recommendation. Now, I told you at the beginning, this section of my newsletter used to be called a resource. And that was because most of the things that I was sharing was um, an Instagram post that had really made me think, or it was a YouTube video or maybe a podcast episode, or it was an article for um, some of the parents in my youth ministry at church or whatever it was. But I want to change this category to a recommendation. I mean, the reason for this is because I have a lot of things that I'd like to recommend to people that don't require you to go read or watch a video or listen to a podcast. Maybe it's a product. Maybe it is a, uh, maybe it is a book or maybe it's a jacket. They're like, y'all, I bought this jacket at Palmetto Moon and I just love it. It was on sale. Like you really should go get it. Um, I'm thinking about you know, like a gift guide for the end of the year. Like, Hey, what are, here's like three really great gifts that you can buy for your spouse or for your kids or man, like here's that person that you just cannot seem to find a gift for. Here's a couple of things that would be really cool for that. I'm thinking about recommending some of 
of the products that I use on a regular basis for fitness and things like that. Um, so I want to think about recommendations instead of resources. So just like I can just lay some things on your plate and you have the freedom to say, you know what, that's not for me. Or, wow, I cannot believe that I did not have this in my life. Um, so what I would like to do is kind of combine <laughs> a resource and a recommendation because that's exactly what this is. And I wish that I had my physical copy of this in front of me, um, but I want to recommend to you the book, The Ruthless Elimination of Hurry by John Mark Comer. Um, I really believe that if you don't read a single other book in 2024, this is the one that you need to read. The book originally came out, um, I believe at the beginning of 2020 or like the end of 2019. It was like right before COVID, right before everything just went crazy and it totally wrecked my world. Um, he, he talks about how, um, Dallas Willard, who is one of the most incredible teachers of the way of Jesus ever, um, says that the great enemy to a spiritual life is hurry. Like it's not secularism. It's not any of the other issues that you probably would guess it's hurry and because hurry keeps you from doing the things that you would most want to do because you're always fighting against the tyranny of the urgent. The book, the ruthless elimination of hurry is an absolute game changer. Everyone that I recommend this book to comes back to me and says, why? Why didn't I read this sooner? Like I needed this. Um, and it's absolutely incredible. Truly, um, anything that John Mark Comer writes is gold. It's absolute gem. Um, he's got a new book coming out called Practicing the Way in January. Um, go ahead and pre-order that book. I will include links to all of the things that I'm recommending to you in the description or in the show notes of the podcast so that you can get those super easy. I do need to give you a little disclaimer though. If I put an Amazon link in the description of any of these videos or the show notes, it's an affiliate link, which just means that if you use that link to make a purchase, I get a small kickback for the purchase that you make. It doesn't cost you anything else. It does not add any other kind of taxes. I get a small kickback just for pushing you to those particular products. I say thank you in advance because this is kind of the way that um, you can help me support this uh, podcast and this YouTube channel in the future. And hopefully we can keep creating some great resources and recommending some things for you. Like I said, this isn't always going to be like a, uh, here's all of the books that you need to read. Because some of you aren't readers. Like sometimes it'll be like, y'all, you need to go listen to Drew Holcomb's new album, which actually is very true. You should go listen to Drew, Drew Holcomb and the Neighbors' new album. They're incredible. Sometimes it'll be like, hey, y'all, you should go check out the the sale that Huckberry is having. Like talk about like gifts for the man in your life. Ladies, if you're listening, just go check out Huckberry. They're having their Black Friday sale this week um, and it'll be awesome for you. I'll link that in the description as well. So a thought, a recommendation, and now to close a verse. Now I, I mentioned earlier and in episode zero that this isn't a Christian podcast per se. Like, this is not going to be a Bible study show. We're not going to wrestle with theology necessarily, though that's my worldview. This is my job. My full-time job is I'm a pastor to students. I get to sit down and I believe that I've been uniquely wired to be a teacher in the way of Jesus. This is just what I do. So it's going to come up. It's just natural for me because the life and teachings of Jesus is the way that I build my life. Um, so um, I'm actually teaching this coming Sunday on one of my favorite passages um, from Jesus. And I'm going to go ahead and grab my Bible. Um, hey, if you need an incredible Bible, go to evangelicalbible.com and pick up a Schuyler Bible or an Allen Bible. Um, that's just Kyle's Bible nerdiness coming out in the episode. You are welcome. But like I said, I am about to teach on one of my favorite passages. And I'd like to read this just super short little passage for you because I think it's Jesus's primary teaching on formation and growth um, to become the kinds of persons that you were created to be. Um, and then on the back side of that, um, I want to read another passage for you um, from one of the earliest teachers in the way of Jesus. His name was Paul. And he kind of riffs on what Jesus has to say. And if you listen closely, you'll kind of understand what I'm talking about. So the first is John's gospel. It's in John chapter 15. Um, and we're going to read about five verses from there. And then we're going to switch over and read a letter from Paul to a church in Galatia and read from Galatians chapter five. So I'm hoping this is a blessing for you. This is John 15 verse one. I am the true vine, Jesus, and my father is the vine grower. He removes every branch in me that bears no fruit. Every branch that bears fruit, he prunes to make it bear 
more fruit. You've already been cleansed by the word that I've spoken to you. Abide in me as I abide in you. Just as the branch cannot bear fruit by itself unless it abides in the vine, neither can you unless you abide in me. I am the vine. You are the branches. Those who abide in me and I in them bear much fruit because apart from me, you can do nothing. Let's skip down to verse number eight. My father is glorified by this, that you bear much fruit and become my disciples. As the father has loved me, so I have loved you. Abide in my love. And then down in verse 11, I have said these things to you so that my joy may be in you and that your joy may be complete. Now hear that. Now let's jump over to Galatians chapter five and let's hear Paul's little riff on Jesus teaching here. So this is Galatians chapter five, verses 22 and 23. By contrast, the fruit of the spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. There is no law against such things. Verse 25, if we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. So those are just like two passages that I get to teach on this Sunday, and I'm really, really excited about it. So I just want to lay those verses out there for you. Um, And I'll include all of them in the description and the show notes so you can go back and read them as well. Um, And hopefully you just kind of let them soak into who you are and allow them to help to shape you and to form you in the future. So that's basically a, um, an audio version or a video version of a three things newsletter. It'll be super quick. It'll be super short, just a a way for you to uh, read and to hear some of the things that I'm thinking about. Some of the things that I'm sharing Um, We'll include links, you know, in some of these two podcast episodes that were really great or, you know, particular works from some of the podcast guests um, that we have on. You know, I've got a couple of guys that are going to be on in the next couple of months who have books coming out. So that's going to be really great. And we'll be able to recommend their work to you. Um, And as I mentioned, you can find links to everything that we mentioned in this episode in the YouTube description or in the show notes if you're listening on audio. So I just want to ask you for a couple of things and then just... uh, bless you and uh, wish you a happy Thanksgiving. Um, If you are enjoying this in any way, I I know this was a little bit different than the last episode um, and I have to say thank you because y'all just totally blew me away um, with the support for Travis's episode. Like both of us just kind of were taken aback to see how many people just deeply, deeply enjoyed the conversation that he and I were able to have. Um, But if you're enjoying this at all, would you consider giving us a review on Apple Podcasts or wherever you're listening? Um, Like I mentioned before, like growing on podcasts in particular is really difficult because it's it's organic. It's not algorithm driven by a lot of other things, but your reviews, your particular five-star reviews, if you would be so kind, really help us um, get the episodes in front of more people. So we really appreciate that. And if you're watching on YouTube, if you would do all of the YouTube things, if you like the video, leave a comment if you're enjoying it. Um, if you want to subscribe to the channel, share with someone you know who you think like this would be a real blessing for. Like those are the kinds of things that really shape and help us grow and reach more people. Um, And I'm just really, really thankful for that, that you guys have already um, done so much to help us share this with people. Our subscriber count has gone up. Um, We've been able to share these conversations with people that I've never even met. And I'm just, I'm really humbled. And I just want to say thank you. So in the spirit of the Thanksgiving holiday this week, I am grateful for you. Wherever you are, whoever you are, wherever you come from, I am deeply, deeply grateful for you. And I'm just praying that this has been a blessing for you. I'm really excited for episode number three with my coworker, Sean Brown, and you're not going to want to miss that episode. So click the little church bell icon so that you can get notifications about everything that's coming up. And I can't wait to see you in the next one. Have an amazing day. Grace and peace, my friends.